Two, and you're not alone. Mm-hmm. Which one do you want to do? You want to do this one again or a different one again? Test, test, test. Fine work. Okay. Did you want to sing into them a little bit maybe? Should we do Lakeshore? Let's do Lakeshore. <laughs> Emily or Jesse, can we have you listen to the mics just to make sure we're balanced? Yeah. I'm not sure what <laughs> I'm not sure what numbers they are, but they're the colored ones. Or test. He's test, over on test, the, one test, of the piano ones. Test, test, test. Test, test, test. Testing. Test, test, test. And test. Check, check, check.
Thank you, Chris, for leading us into worship with your music. Um, good morning, and the Lord be with you. Good to be together again as we start up now, well, last week, our in-person worship time, but uh, just to let those that uh, uh, listen to us by way of our radio broadcast or online worship that we'll continue to offer those uh, uh, worship opportunities as well uh, for those who are um, not as comfortable coming to uh, in-person worship. And of course, Sunday school started last week too, so we celebrate uh, that and we thank uh, our teachers and our leaders that work with our young people here at Grace and, and Providence. We're thankful for your efforts and uh, the impact that you have on our, on, on our children. Uh, a lot of those things we took for granted before, but we don't take those for granted anymore, so uh, thank you. Um, we uh, want to lift up uh, uh, the sad news of two deaths in our congregational family this past week. Uh, Mark Plate uh, passed away uh, this past week, as well as Larry Moan. Uh, Larry is uh, Lynn Breberg's uh, brother, so we lift up the Plate family and, and the Moan and the Breberg family as they uh, face these uh, uh, losses, and we commend both uh, Mark and Larry to the eternal promises of, of God. Uh, we don't know about uh, services, but we just ask that you... Uh, um, uh, keep an ear out in the community for, for those uh, as, as the family makes those plans for funerals. Uh, give thanks uh, for our radio and online uh, services given this morning in memory of Jordy Martinson from Mike and Kim Thompson and, and their family, and then also the roses that you see uh, by the uh, lectern stand. Uh, those are also in memory of Jordy this morning, so we remember uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Martinson and the uh, Thompson family this morning as well. But just uh, let you know that um, next week is our congregational meeting, our annual meeting, where we pass a budget, some of the things that uh, we need to have uh, done as we uh, continue our work and our ministry here at Grace Lutheran. So uh, immediately following the worship service uh, next Sunday, we'll move right into our congregational meeting. I don't know if we'll allow you to go down and get a cup of coffee, or maybe we'll allow you to do that. I, I'm not sure, but um, we're going to move right into the congregational meeting. I mean, some things that we have to do, we need to pass a budget for 2021, so we're hoping that you'll be able to stay. Um, we hope to make uh, the service or our meeting available uh, also online. Uh, we can do a, a, a live broadcast of our annual meeting for those of you are, who are in your homes. You could tune in uh, to that via Facebook. Um, we also, if there is a request, we could set up a Zoom meeting as well, and that would give you, uh, those in your homes, the possibility to engage and speak at our meeting, which would be important if that's, if, if that's what uh, you would like to do. So if you want us uh, to uh, set up a Zoom meeting uh, where you can uh, log in from your home and then join the meeting, please let the office know that. Um, Otherwise, we will just do our live broadcast of our annual meeting and the in-person. Uh, so, but please let us know if you want that Zoom option. Um, uh, and then also, if you wish to view the budget uh, that uh, the leadership team here at Grace put together, we'll have that available in the church office, so you can pick that up uh, anytime this week uh, before the congregational meeting. Um, it's Super Bowl time, so uh, we collect items for our food shelf this here we're calling it the super roll of caring. So we're collecting uh, paper products that are on a roll. So like a roll of paper towels or a roll of toilet paper, anything on a roll. We're also collecting rolls of disinfecting wipes also. That's on a roll. Uh, what else is on a roll that I'm forgetting? We will collect any paper products, even if tissue, Kleenex tissue is not on a roll, we'll still collect that as well. But we'll have places for you to bring your items, um, so hopefully we can uh, collect those and then present those on uh, Super Bowl Sunday to our, to our food shelf. So you're invited to participate and have some fun with it, get your kids involved in that uh, mode of giving as well, which is important for us, important for uh, the local people that the food uh, shelf serves, but it's also important for us as Christian people to be giving. So um, thank you for your generosity ahead of time. Well, with those announcements, I think we'll stand and um, we won't shake each other's hands, but we'll wave to each other or extend a, a sign of peace to each other as we gather this morning.
And we greet those that are watching us via our live uh, broadcast. So if you want to turn to the camera and wave to them and say good morning to them as, as well, it's always nice to include them as uh, people gather in different ways in these times. So we'll begin with our confession and forgiveness this morning, as always, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And we pray. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another this morning. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have have sinned sinned against against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. And the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And then you may be seated for our... uh, morning securie and hymn of praise.
And our prayer of the day this morning is found in our bulletins. Let us uh, pray these words together. Almighty God, by grace alone you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And Dan Lee is our lector this morning. First lesson is from Psalm 65, 5 through 12. For God alone my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my deliverance and my honor, my, my mighty rock. My refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances, they go up. They are together lighter than a breath. Put no confidence in extortion and set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice I have heard this. That power belongs to God, and steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord for you repay to all according to their work. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is from Jonah, chapter 3, 1 through 5 and 10. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up and go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had and said that he, and would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. gospel this morning is a reading from St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. And as Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And as he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. And you may be seated. Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our precious Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I want you to just notice the beginning of the gospel reading for this morning, where Jesus says, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. The time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand. You're muted. You're muted. We can't hear you. you. You must have your mute button on. You need to take the mute button off. I, I think you're on mute. 
Sally, unmute yourself. Bottom left corner, click on it. Unmute. Can't hear you right now. The joys of Zoom, right? How many of you have experienced that in a Zoom meeting? <laughs> yeah. I experience it. Usually they're saying those words to me. Not Sally, but Pastor Kendall, you're on mute. Uh, uh, and, and so we've got that, that problem, but we also have the opposite problem when we, uh, you, you know, when we want to say, all right, who's unmuted? Uh, who doesn't have their mute on, right? Because you can hear all the background noise. You can hear, you know, trucks in the background. You can hear dogs barking. You can hear doors slamming. You can hear people talking. So I'm uh, just wondering, can all of this muting and unmuting that we've been living our lives in these last months teach us something about the balance in our lives of both listening and speaking. Spiritually, I think we sometimes need to mute ourselves. Spiritually speaking, I think we sometimes need to practice silence so we can hear divine inspiration in our lives, whether it be comfort from God or a calling from God or God challenging us to do something in, in our lives. Sometimes we just got to put that mute on so we can hear a little better those words that God speaks to us. I mean, the problem is sometimes God sometimes seems to be muted in our lives and we can't hear what God is, is saying. Or we mute God ourselves. We put God's voice and God's call on mute in our own lives. So how can you hear the voice of God when we're so eager to place God on mute? Well, today's texts, like last week's texts, are again about that divine invitation to come and, and follow Jesus, to come and follow the one who calls us each and every day to find purpose in our lives, uh, to learn how to mute ourselves so we can listen, not just on Zoom, but in our everyday lives. There is a time to speak, and there is a time to be silent, to quote that famous passage in Ecclesiastes that I know you know so well. So we are still learning how to listen to God when God calls us. And perhaps the most important part of that great story of Jonah that uh, Danny led, uh, read, part of the ending of it is it's that story that we teach our children. I mean, we even have a Sunday school room here at Grace that's painted with the story of, of Jonah in it. Uh, and, and it depicts uh, the importance, the importance of the story and the importance of knowing that, that God didn't give up on Jonah when he refused to go to Nineveh and he got caught in the belly of a big fish. God did not give up on, on Jonah when Jonah did not listen well to God's call on his, his life. But we see the result of what happened to that great city of Nineveh this morning because God did not give up on, on Jonah. There was nowhere that Jonah could go that God would just let him be or forget about him or let him go. God even sent that big fish, and that is how persistent God is in having us heed and listen to God's voice and God's call on our lives. So when God calls us to listen, to follow him, sometimes we just have to keep the mute button on so we are clear in our listening. And I think listening is also one of the greatest gifts that we offer to one another as well. Being together and establishing community in the church will be important for us here at Grace because the church will be changing 
drastically in the coming years. Every church will. Every institution will. So we need to listen for the Spirit's guidance in all of this. How can grace continue to share its grace-filled work? And, and how can our welcome and our witness have a greater reach as we work together? I mean, being muted is weird, and I get that. Being muted is a bit humbling, but it reminds us of the holy work of listening. It involves paying attention, slowing down, being present, being open. So listen. Listen. Listen to the voice of others. And most importantly, listen to the voice of God. Listen to the God who knows us intimately, who invites us to come and follow. Follow the word of the Lord that is before us. Words of grace, words of love, words of mercy. Come and follow and then go out together in this calling. One day, over 2,000 years ago, some fishermen working at their trade heard a man's voice saying, follow me, and they listened. They dropped their nets and followed, and together with Jesus, they literally changed the world. Changed the world. Simon and Andrew, James and John and Jesus changed the course of history. And so today's message is around this question, who are you going to follow in this life? Who or what are you going to worship with your life? That's the question. That's the question before us. We'll all give our ultimate allegiance to somebody or something. We all have what might be called a master value, where when there's conflict between values, one of them is going to win. One of those values is going to trump the other. So what is your ultimate value? That's the question this morning, and I want to talk about that as clearly as I know how, and then give you a chance to think about your ultimate value and affirm your ultimate value this morning. And it's going to be really simple. This is not about learning or a lot of understanding. This is just about listening. Listening. It's about listening a great listening around the most important question in your life. So I want to give us all a chance to do that, to kind of put a stake in the ground uh, this, this morning. To say, this is my commitment. This is my life's commitment. This is my core value. Who are you going to follow? What's the ultimate decision? What's the ultimate commitment in your life? And so I'll start here. I know, and and, and if you're uh, new to thinking about faith, this idea that you must choose your ultimate value will feel quite narrow, and, and I think that there's really a tendency to resist this type of thinking. And I get that. There's a lot that has been written over the last several years, especially in the business community, in the business world about strategic thinking, and maybe you've done some of that work before, thinking strategically, arguing that you need not to box yourself in the pressure of the either or, right? Uh, We don't want to be pressured into that type of thinking but we kind of want the both and thinking in our world and, and in our, our life. Now, we kind of want to open ourselves up to 
uh, the genius of that both and. So it's not either or, but it's both, both and. It's not either a good flight safety record and a really fun flight crew with like Delta Airlines, but you can have both, right? You can have both things. It's not either or, it's both and. Uh, you, can have, you can have both. You can have fun people working in the cabin with you, and you can have a safe flight. Both, both and. Uh, it's not either great taste or less filling with Miller Lite. I mean, I can have both, or I'm a pastor, but you can have both, right? But you get, you get the point. You get the point. You can have good quality and low prices with the genius of IKEA, that great Swedish furniture design company. You can have both. You can't figure out how to follow their instructions, but you can have, but you can have both. You can have good quality and low prices. With Walmart, you can buy more and you can pay less. It's not either or, it's both, both and. With the Ford company, you can build proud and you can go further, right? So it's both and. And to be fair, with Chevy, you can run deep and you can find new roads. It's not either or, it's both and. So we all love this freedom, this option, this choice, these alternatives that are before us because we're all convinced the more options, the better, right? The more choices in our lives, the better. And we kind of idolize it. We want to keep all of our options open. But it turns out life doesn't always work that way. Life doesn't always work that way. It turns out that our idolatry of choice, keeping my options up, I just want to be able to value whatever I want to value in life, is paralyzing us. It's paralyzing us. And it actually gets in the way of a good life. Now, when I got married, the vow I was asked to take when I stood up in a church next to my wife included these words, and will you forsaking all others keep you only onto her as long as you both shall live. How many of you have made that decision or that choice? Yeah, you said something very similar to that. Now, imagine if you said, imagine if I said, well, that's such either-or thinking. That's not good. You know, I, I would like to apply the genius of this both-and thinking uh, in my wedding. So how do you think that would have gone over? No way. I'd be applying all that wisdom to my little old lonesome self right in, in life if I wouldn't have made the commitment at that time. Well, when you're standing at the altar, it isn't both and. It's either or. Here's the thing. You have a little altar in your heart as well, and so do I. And the Bible calls human beings to be wholeheartedly, the Bible calls human beings to be unreserved, all in, fully committed, wholly surrendered to their devotion in God. And I know in our culture where we worship choices and freedom and options that this is really countercultural. It just is. It's, it's not like, well, I just like a little bit of God in my life and, and the ability to follow whenever I choose to follow or whenever I want to follow. But I'm telling you, over and over, the Bible calls us to full commitment to God. And it's issued... And if we get confused about what's going on on the altar in our hearts, then you just limp through life because you're just back and forth all the time. 
And while you might get the picture from the reading this morning that Jesus is casually wandering around the seaside, picking up followers like one might pick flowers in an open field, that's actually not the case at all. The Greek betrays the urgency of this scene, this follow me of Jesus that, that Jesus throws out to those fishermen. It's not a question. It's not a plead. It is, in the Greek, it's in the imperative form, which means that it's a command for the fishermen, and it's a command for us. And not just a command, but Jesus was yelling this on the seaside, follow, follow me. It's in the imperative form. Jesus yelled, follow me. And later he does the same thing in his life. He doesn't suggest. He doesn't recommend. He declares that it cannot be done, this both and thing. You cannot serve two masters, Jesus says. It can't be done. It's not a suggestion. It can't be done, Jesus says. And we don't, I know we don't like to think of Jesus yelling, but here in the Gospel of Mark, that's all he's doing in these first few verses. And he's probably yelling because Jesus knows humanity. And Jesus knows me. And Jesus knows you. And Jesus knows our hearts. So he's yelling at us, follow me. Follow me. Jesus knows us too well, and He knows our tendency to fish for all sorts of things in this life, to fish for fame and fortune and compliments and correct answers. He knows how easily we follow any sort of good news we might hear, advertisements, political gossip, political decrees, jokes, series bad directions, sales pitches. And so Jesus starts out yelling because I think God knows we are people who are hard of hearing because we rarely put on the mute button to really actually pause and listen to God's voice. So the truth is, the truth is every single day, Jesus comes to us in one way or another in order to disrupt our lives, to disturb the way things have always been, to disturb who we have always been. And He does it not to destroy, but He does it to renew. He does it not to harm, but He does it to heal. And honestly, He disrupts us, He disturbs us, he calls us so that we can be in God's reign. Remember the beginning of the reading where Jesus says, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. So Jesus is constantly on the shore of our lives calling us, calling you, calling me because God sees you as worthy of God's attention. God sees you as being capable of great things in your life. And God has called and equipped us to be disciples, to travel together, to travel along together with each other, and with Jesus in this new and in this challenging year of the Lord, Anno Domine, A.D. 2021. So let's do that together, shall we? Amen.
Let us bow our heads now for the prayers of the church. O God of the ages and God of today, God of this year, God of this time, God near at hand, we are grateful that you summon this day into being, a new creation for our benefit. And we're grateful that you are near to us and that you invite us to bring the deepest joys and the greatest concerns of our lives by laying them here at your feet. So we pray for the earth. We pray for our home. We pray for the people within it who need help. We pray for those who have suffered immeasurable losses due to sickness or due to disaster. We pray for people who will spend the day in a hospital bed. We pray for those who are sick outside of a hospital. And we pray for those who care for them. We pray for people whose hearts and spirits are broken. We pray for the mentally ill, for the anxious, for the addict, for the depressed, we pray for mothers and daughters. We pray for fathers and sons. We pray for sisters and brothers. We pray for the sinner who believes that forgiveness is out of reach, 
for others or even for themselves. So we pray that they may hear your ancient voice, O God, today. Your voice of love, your voice of mercy, and that you will never let us go. Lord, in your mercy. For those in our community who have asked for our prayers, remembering Jim Anderson, Pat Saltness, Olivia Baldwin, Tom Beals, Ken Club, Jack Flayton, Monica Kennedy, Brad Matson, Lauren Thone, Bonnie Westfield, Jeff Moe, Julie Muron, Deb Lewis, Butch Anderson, Sarah Anderson, Sharla Kruger, Sam Moss, Kenneth Parody, Mary Schomer, John Perry Peterson, Ken and Carol Earp, Elois Ronning, Joey Anderson Ernest, Gwen Lewis, Jack Lewis, Tammy Wager, Cheryl Skindelin, Clarice Olson, Scarlett Ludvigson. We remember John Lund and Arliss Buer, Evelyn Lundgren. Madeline and Wilton Gustafson, and we pray for the family of Mark Plate. Lord, in your mercy. And finally, Lord, help us to follow, to believe in forgiveness, to believe in your saving work in our lives, to believe in your promise that renews us every single day with the message that your love is for us, to help us to believe in beginnings, to make a beginning, to be a beginning for ourselves and for all those we meet. And bless us as we gather here in your house. May this be a place where there may be signs to each other of your grace and peace, of possibilities that seem impossible. May this be a place where we enjoy one another because we love one another. And Lord, you call us all the time through the prophets, through Jesus, through Scripture, in the Word read here, in the Word read in our homes, in the Word sung in our hymns, and through those surprising ways we never expect, those moments we call grace. So speak to us, call to us, invite us again today, and you will find us waiting, and you will find us listening in the name of Jesus. Amen. And, O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And then if you'd stand with me as we confess our faith using the words of our Apostles' Creed this morning. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And Lord, lead us into your kingdom and teach us always to pray together as one family. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow. are good, all your ways are sure. I will trust in you alone, higher than my sight, high above my life. I will trust in you alone. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow. serve, I'll serve. If this life I lose, I will follow you. I will follow you. Light unto the world, light unto my life. I will live for you alone. You're the one I seek, knowing I will Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God.